Right, we're just going to have a quick look through the ILOM system and um, the BIOS and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so I've got this running in a virtual XP because uh, I can't get Java to work properly on my main computer. So that's why I'm a bit old school in Windows XP and Internet Explorer. So we'll just log into the um, ILOM system. Um, so this is just on my local network. Username, password. Um, so this is the uh, Sun ILOM system, which is uh, the uh, management console thing for the X4600. Uh, so we've got a few things here, hardware versions and um, BIOS versions for ILOM. Um, we've got a session timeout so we can change how long the ILOM system kicks you out of the web interface. Um, components uh, section here is a log of all the FRUs, the field replaceable units. Uh, so each of the parts has an entry here, um, the motherboard, the chassis, the uh, processor modules, they all have an entry here with their description and serial number. Uh, system monitoring um, allows you to look at all the uh, the sensors that are on the system. Um, now obviously most of these are showing not available at the moment because the system is actually powered off. Um, obviously the uh, the ILOM system works all the time whenever there's power in it but um, the main system is actually off at the moment and we've got temperature sensors obviously you can just see the ambient temperature of the main board but the main processors there are unavailable and we've got uh, voltages there that was the standby voltages and lastly the fan sensors obviously they're not doing anything either because it's turned off um, in event logs, uh, the ILOM system keeps a log of all the uh, system events, you know, the uh, power on, power off, power supply failures, fan failures, all that sort of stuff. Um, if you open the lid on the uh, the chassis, that kind of thing. So um, the BIOS generated events are all the uh, post information, um, hard disk information, that, that kind of thing. So as it boots up, there's a load of entries going here. And... Um, there's not really anything, anything in there. Um, locator indicator is a, a little light which is uh, located on the front and rear of the unit which you can just turn on to uh, to remind yourself which system you might be working on. Uh, the configuration here for uh, system management access is the uh, stuff for the ILOM interface. Um, so these are the settings for ILOM itself um, and uh, how ILOM works with uh, other systems yeah, reporting back. Yeah. Um, got alert information here. These um, incidentally are the two IP addresses or some of the IP addresses that I found in the system which relate to UBS. Um, if you look at those IP addresses, they come back to UBS Bank. Network settings, this is obviously just the local um, settings for ILOM, um, yeah, the IP and everything. Um, it, uh, ILOM also has a serial interface which is configured there. And lastly, the clock settings with uh, NTP settings, all that sort of stuff. Um, user accounts, these are user accounts for ILOM. Um, obviously, there's just one in there at the moment. Um, active sessions, LDAP, blah, blah, blah. Again, there's another UBS IP address here and a little bit of information there. Um, just scroll this back. There's a thing in, in here saying London. Uh, remote control is where you actually are able to control the uh, um, the actual system. We've got uh, remote power on, power off. Uh, the mouse mode settings is for the uh, redirection, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, we can upgrade the ILOM firmware. We can reset it. So if we just go back to the uh, remote control. So if we turn on 16-bit color, launch the redirection, um, Java starts up. And uh, we can log into the remote console. So this is um, live video from the um, the console video port on the back of the machine. Obviously, there's nothing plugged into, into it. It's just uh, all coming through ILOM. So uh, we can start, stop, and all that sort of stuff. We've got different settings for keyboard, mouse, fl uh, floppy disk redirection. Um, so that redirects from the local machine. Uh, we can also load in um, 
CD-ROM and uh, floppy images as well, which go over the uh, the network interface as well. Right, so if we power this on, so the system powers up um, and makes a huge, great big racket when it does. Um, now it takes a little bit of time here for um, the actual post to occur. Um, it, uh, it it's around about 30, 40 seconds. It actually takes for anything to actually appear on the screen, which is quite surprising. Um, um, obviously now it's powered on we can see the temperatures of the, the CPU cores, the ambient temperatures of the, the uh, processor boards uh, we've got all the voltages for each of the um, the main board and all the processor modules so we're still waiting here for something to appear on the screen um, I suspect this is probably why the uh, the seller thought that it was faulty because it just takes so long to uh, um, to actually um, output anything to the screen. Oh, there we go. We're just starting to um, boot up now. So you can see all the uh, CPU cores listed there. And various BIOS information. I'll have a quick look at the event logs. Obviously, you can. Um, the ILOM system is totally independent from the um, the actual main system, so you can do anything in ILOM, and it doesn't affect anything. Um, in the main system, uh, it's just doing the memory check there. We'll skip the rest of the memory test. Um, there's 64 gigabytes in there, so it does take a while. So this is the um, the network boot uh, initialization. This happens four times over because there's four network cards. Um, so once it's uh, initialized those, it will then go through and uh, um, initialize the RAID controller. I've actually only got one hard disk in, the, in this at the moment, so it's not running any sort of RAID configuration at the moment. It's just one single hard disk. Um, and then it runs through to this, and we're just about to start to boot after all that time. Okay, and we're actually going to start booting Windows now. Obviously, you can see here whatever the uh, the main system is doing, you can still go into ILOM and monitor anything at all. Um, Windows is just coming up. Yay, there we go, uh, Windows Server 2003 Data Center X64 Edition. So uh, this is the highest spec uh, Windows Server that uh, I could get my hands on. I actually didn't need to use this. Um, I could have used Enterprise, but uh, this is what I got. So just log in and you can just see that. So this is uh, the, the live video from the console port being redirected. Right, uh, this is the BIOS uh, utility, um, obviously quite fairly similar interface to uh, many of the Amer American Megatrends interfaces. There's just a little bit more information there. Um, we've got uh, CPU configuration, IDE, Super IO, blah, blah, blah. So there's a lot of settings in here. Um, so we've got the CPU um, settings there. Interesting, there's a CPU overclock option there. I've not played with that. I don't want to break it. Um, IDE configuration. Um, as I mentioned previously, it does actually have SATA and IDE, but you don't really have access to it because it's only used for the CD DVD drive that's in it. ACPI. I have no clue what any of these things really do.
event log that um, the BIOS has its own um, event log. Um, you can actually also access the uh, the BMC event log as well. And here we've got uh, the hypertransport configuration, so it allows you to manually adjust the links between the processors and the other peripherals like the uh, North Bridge and uh, PCI interface. IPMI, I think that's some kind of uh, management interface. Obviously here we can see the, the BMC event log and that's what we actually see um, in the ILOM system as well. So these are just duplicates of what we can see in the w web interface. The uh, LAN configuration here um, in this screen is actually pretty much what actually uh, you can see in the uh, web interface settings. So it just it's just another sp uh, spot where you can actually go in and make the changes. MPS, I don't really know what that is. Remote access, that's actually talking about the serial port, which again is um, kind of duplicated in the ILOM web interface. And there's uh, some settings in the USB uh, because there are a number of the uh, the redirection devices are actually USB um, devices which are, um, you know, you've got the virtual floppy and the virtual CD-ROM so the um, redirection from this Java console is, you, is done through USB. Various options here for PCI and plug and play and all that sort of stuff. So here, obviously, we can change boot priorities and all that sort of stuff. Um, and different boot options. You've got the quick boot and all that sort of stuff. Um, hard disk drives. Now, um, it's nice that the um, the RAID controller actually talks to the BIOS, so you can actually see the hard disks in the BIOS. So here we've got some of the memory configurations. Um, obviously each CPU node has its own set of uh, settings, um, but uh, they're all obviously on default at the moment. And Southbridge configuration, um, yeah, various things in there. Um, most of those are turned off. And that is pretty much it.